eighth grade. I really miss being with all of you. We've had some really fabulous times. And each of my classes was really full. I don't know if you know that or not, but I had about 75 of you in three classes. And you were just great. I was so incredibly proud of you. Hardworking, creative, fun to be with, um, artistic, really a phenomenal group of people. I hope that we stay connected in Christ and that we had enough time together to have great memories and, and just have that wonderful influence of each other throughout our days. I'm going to start by praying because I'd like to take some time today to talk about the program. As you know, when we first left, we thought we'd be back around April 6th, so I just made a plan that like in that one or two days that would hopefully get us through being home for a couple weeks. Now we're not going to be back. Well, I won't be back with you. You'll be in high school, but I'll try to get over to Xavier, and if you don't go to Xavier, hopefully we'll connect somewhere and uh, pray for each other and so forth. Having said that, now that we're through the end of the year, I've had to change the plan to make sense for all of us. Some of you are at home with tons of art supplies, your very own art room. I would assume I've heard of a lot of people having that. Others of you, you might be in a smaller house and you've got just a little space on the dining room table to work with very few supplies. So I want to talk about the plan that I think is going to be very meaningful and have a lot of potential for each of you, no matter what your space or materials may be. Heavenly Father, we love you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord, that you care about us, that you so love this world, that you gave your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, God with us, to die on the cross for our sins and rise again for our justification, that whosoever believes in him, that's to adhere to, to trust in and rely on him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Father, it is true, the things of this world just, they can change. But Lord Jesus, you said you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we thank you for that. The Bible says that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we ask you to bless us with that knowledge and with that reality. And we ask you to go before us and behind us in life, in our relationships with you and with other people, and in our artwork and creative thinking development and our visual communication skills. Help us have a great video visit here in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, this is what the plan's going to look like, and it's on your the teacher webpage I have on that Haiku Power School uh, webpage for 8th grade online learning. Um, some of the things that you should know, let me just check here. Um, okay, uh, some of the things that you should know is are that there are two parts to your plan. One is the sketchbook, and that's just going to continue as normal. Your sketchbook is due um, May 22nd. That is the deadline on sketchbook. It's a firm deadline. In addition to that, it'll be 10 hours for the quarter, and then every other hour we'll have uh, one point over 100. The other part of your program is just a little bit different than we started out with. Yes, I'd like you to work on the art theory packet. That is one of several class assignment options. And the one hour a week that you devote to making art, or uh, that would be from those class assignment selections. You do not need to do them all. I would like you to spend at least some of that time with the art theory packet. Uh, you just can't lose doing that. That's going to be so good for you. 
The other units are also very good for you. You might spend all of your hours on one unit that you just, well, this is just for you. This is so great. Others will say, you know, these two really interest me and I want to divide my time or maybe you get into one and then you want to try something else and you go back and forth. Uh, maybe between two, three, or four different ideas, that's fine. I do have these um, log sheets online. If you can't seem to get that to work, just give me your first and last name, the number of hours you spent on the class assignments, the number of the hours or amount of time on sketchbook, and uh, have your parent type their name. I have to trust you on that and a brief description of what you did. If you can send photos, I can give you a lot of feedback and it's just great. Send that in to me at my t regular school email. Currently, now I'm doing this Thursday night, but when I send it, it'll be tomorrow, Friday, when two things are due. One, your first three hours of class assignment work from the web page under those class assignments. And the other, the first three hours of your sketchbook. Your next deadline is Friday, May 15th. At that time, three more uh, class assignments are going to be due. And on Friday, May 22nd, that last one hour of class assignments is due. The game and probably the theater, uh, you could do extra work and I would give you some sort of extra grade for going beyond that until May 29th, but I want to get all the grades in, all the things settled by the 22nd of May, but if you have some more on those two projects, uh, they would count not for those hours, but as a bonus. On the teacher webpage, I have a section devoted to explaining the sketchbook hours. Some of you are new to this. Uh, we have one boy that just joined us. Others of you, maybe you have had kind of an idea of what sketchbook is about, but when you read that section, maybe a whole bunch of other great ideas will come to your mind and heart, and your days of quarantine will fly by with these beautiful things that you're doing. Again, one of your uh, class assignment options is the um, art theory packet. One of the 8th grade boys this year, what, during the quarantine, wrote to me and said, Mrs. Bruth, you should really uh, think about putting some examples on the art theory section so we have uh, some better idea on things. And I put like a ton of pictures up there with little notes about the different elements and principles that kind of come to the forefront. Then you can get to the artist trading card assignment. And um, those are 2.5 by 3.5 inches. And artists around the world have been doing this for years. They have, um, they share their artwork this way, and everyone gets this little pizza sample, this little piece of artwork that demonstrates somebody's skill and interest, and it helps develop a bond between people. I was hoping we could trade these in class, but now we can't. So, would you please just email me if you have an idea of what we should do? Should we uh, exchange those? Uh, when you get to high school, you can just find the classmates from your art class, or do you want to just do enough at home for friends and family? How do you want to do that? I pulled one out of my um, booklet. I have a whole book, I probably showed this to you, where I've put my, it's like baseball cards or something, and I just keep them in here. I also have um, pages with cards from other people. Uh, but I have um, mine in this booklet. And then um, on the back, usually people will write their first and last name. They're two and a half by three inches, three and a half inches. So um, that's one of your options. You don't have to do them. Maybe that's not an option that interests you. Then I have the sketchbook information. Now for you, I know some of you took paper mache home, others didn't. Some of you are working, you didn't take your paper mache home, but you're doing paper mache anyway. You can mix flour, water, and some glue, just regular glue, not too much. You don't want it to get stringy like melted cheese. But um, if I was making this much paper mache, I might have a, 
couple, maybe a tablespoon or two, maybe a little more of glue in there. So if you want to do paper mache, that would count. Remember, uh, when you finish the paper mache part, check it over, put little paper mache band-aids over anything that's sticking out, little tabs that are sticking out, or places that have gotten kind of flaky. And then take pencil and draw your project, draw your designs, and come up with a couple ideas then with colored pencil added in. Red next to green, blue next to orange, yellow next to purple. And patterns, textures, repetitions where that applies. And choose what you like. Take a light colored pencil, outline everything for your paper mache, and then paint away. Have fun. Um, so paper mache is one of your class assignment hours. If you do extra hours, of course, during the week it counts for a sketchbook on any of these. And then, of course, regular, your own ideas for a sketchbook, not for another class assignment, though. Another option is the game. Um, this should employ a lot of your creative thinking and your artistry. In fact, I'd like you to come up with how is the game played, what does winning mean, all those things. It might be a board game, a card game, it might be a theatrical game with art elements. It might be up to you. It could be an outdoor game, an indoor game. Somebody uh, in eighth grade sent me two games that they've done and they were just phenomenal. Uh, so feel free uh, to do as many as you want or to take an awful lot of time with one. Years ago, there were two, I think they were eighth grade uh, boys in my class and they shared a backyard and they got permission they transformed the backyard into a miniature golf course so as the coronavirus quarantine ends uh, maybe there are some options like that uh, for you as well but let's say you made a board game or um, you could make the characters you could make the uh, cards with questions or points or money or all those things if you want to get your family involved in any of these, please do. Um, my mother was a very creative woman, very artistic, and all three of us girls turned out to be in art-related fields. As you know, I teach art. My littlest sister, highly successful marketing woman, with using art and design and reaching the public with visual images to where she's uh, very comfortably retired at a pretty young age. My middle sister uh, had a real compassion for people when they're hurting. And as an occupational therapist, uh, she, over the years she's helped a lot of people with spinal cord injuries and paralysis uh, return home and be able to function. Part of that uh, is to help people with art skills so that they have meaningful and uh, rewarding things to do with their hands if they still work. One that I didn't put here, and I'm going to add, is a little theater idea. Um, whether you call it puppetry or um, kind of a, a, a non-human sort of theater, if you will, that you use uh, these characters, these puppets or uh, objects to be uh, the actors and actresses. Uh, the nice thing about a little theater idea is that it employs uh, so much of your imagination and so many communication skills. Uh, you could do it simply, maybe a, a cereal box that no, you know, it's done, it's recycled, and you cut a rectangle and that's the opening for your theater and you work with it from there. Uh, maybe you have a box in the basement you could use. Uh, your call, maybe curtains in a doorway and so forth and so on. Uh, making the characters with paint or string puppets or sticks with puppets on them, paper or cardboard or uh, moving pieces, um, material. You can do all of that and you can take it that step further where you have stories. And I will, um, I forgot to tell the other classes, but I'm going to add some video if I can from some of my 7th and 8th grade creative writing classes that um, incorporated art and made stories, plays, and then uh, made the characters in the backgrounds. You can get the whole family involved. That's what I was telling you about my parent, my mother. Uh, is she, we would sometimes do uh, projects as a family. I remember one Christmas season, 
my three cousins and my mother's sister, their mother came over and my grandmother and we made paper mache creche figures for uh, Christmas for each of the families to have a whole set. And I was about, I don't know, fifth or seventh grade and I never forgot doing that. That was such a, a real uh, deep memory. And um, if this quarantine can bring about a great memory for you and your family, then feel free to turn um, some of these art projects into things that you work together on. And maybe you'll even do some stories, Bible stories, fairy tales, or stories you make up uh, or with your family and you entertain each other. They may have a very serious message or they might have a lot of, you know, good clean humor and uh, you might enjoy that. Another one is just called Building with Cardboard. You had to start it in that with paper mache. I've included a, a link where they go through some real um, good ideas for working with cardboard and building things to be pretty secure and um, stable. You can add paint afterward. If you had an empty room, you could make you know buildings all around the room with cardboard and textures and windows and shingles and all that. Or maybe you want to make. Uh, I've got a great picture on your web page of someone made a camera and in the back they added a little room. Or maybe you want to make a little bird or something, but um, or a boat or a city. Another one is called Paper People. And you can take, kind of like we did the Sheep of God's Pasture, to use a lot of uh, inventiveness. You'll use uh, paper, obviously. You could use cardboard. You could use cut and glue items, uh, recycled items, art supplies. And um, I remember we had a standard poodle once, and I, I after cutting it, I washed some of its uh, hair. And, you know, it's so curly, it's like lamb's wool. And then, you know, I could use some of that for arts, art work, too. Um, and so you can make these characters. Wouldn't have to be people. Could be a giraffe character. or a, And that could be combined with the theater and, or with the game. So these can kind of cross-pollinate and make for a lot of fun. Uh, one thing I added for uh, my older students was a reflection on the quarantine. It might be a two-dimensional piece of work, it might be a three-dimensional piece of work, but we are in a very, very rare period of time. And if you can um, make a piece of artwork that is a reflection on this time as you're going through it, I know that you've been studying, at least I think you did, you had time to study Anne Frank. Well, she went through just horrific times, really horrific times, but she wrote and her diary or her journal uh, became such an inspiration to people down through the decades. Your piece of artwork should in some way, um, you know, maybe it's a peaceful moment, maybe it's the quiet street, maybe it's the family at home, maybe it's some of the, you know, I've seen even humorous things with all the masks and everything, but it's also a serious time. I made one, and I, I put a picture of it there. It, it, I used a, a, a prisma color, and you can't really erase those very well. It's a thin lead, and um, it's about two feet tall, but the eyes were never in the right place. I have the woman looking like a little like this, so the one eye is just not right. So no, I don't know why I even kept working on it, but I did. And anyway, so it's my reflection. I put it at an angle because the eyes look better for you to see, but. Um, it's my reflection with the past behind this woman and the storm cloud of the virus kind of heading off and uh, you know she's just kind of looking forward and pausing and uh, this tapestry of life is still there this wonderful experience of life last of all on the class assignment options so far I might invent some more and put them on there would be a photography unit I've taken a few photography classes in the last couple of years. I've learned a lot, and one thing I learned was really get to know your camera. When I found out how to use the macro setting on my camera, it changed the world, and I have been really blessed to take some very nice um, pictures of insects and plants and nature close up. I've enjoyed it immensely. I've included a link I found that I thought was very helpful. 
on composition, what is on your paper, where it's placed. I have 12 categories, so it's sort of a scavenger hunt style uh, photography unit. You don't have to do all 12 uh, categories, you could maybe choose your favorite or spend time with four or five of them. Some of them include things like close-ups, so you would find things you could do, sort of that macro uh, photography with something close-up. Family, posed and not posed, you could get some really great photos that way. Portraiture. Um, I have a number of former students who are earning money as professional photographers. Senior pictures, weddings, and so forth. Uh, also, don't forget that as time goes on, you may want to be able to take photos of your family members that are beautiful. What is your angle? In other words, you could maybe find something with a lot of vertical lines or horizontal and vertical lines or horizontal lines or diagonal lines. Um, you can go and get something really unexpected. We might even look at your photo and go, what is that? And it's maybe like, you know, the edges of a book or something. We just we go, we see this really close up vertical lines and go, what is that? And then it dawns on us what it is. It can be surprising. Um, textures is a category. Reflected images. Um, I have uh, taken pictures of raindrops and um, puddles of water and you know you can find reflections. A friend of mine took pictures of the world upside down in spoons. So when you hold a spoon a certain way you get reflections in them. Anyway, so um, there are a lot of categories there that I think that you will enjoy as you put that together. And let's see, I have one other thing I want to do. And that is, um, besides tell you that I miss you a lot, and I know we would have had a great time. I think we would have had an extremely memorable year. They are going to plan someday that you can pick your artwork up. And I'm going to connect with... Um, the administrators to get your artwork off the wall soon so we don't get any light uh, damage from it. But know that I really have enjoyed you and I do miss you and I expect you to do some really remarkable things. One really great thing about doing artwork, I learned at Cal Poly when I went to college there in California, it's called a flow activity. You do your artwork and suddenly you go, man, it's three hours later. This is a time when our mind is so engrossed in what we're doing that we literally lose track of the other things that are on our minds usually. And it's very good for our mental health. It's a, a very healthy and brain developing sort of thing to do. Anyway, Psalm 20, 121 will be our scripture of the day. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You think of that. He made heaven and earth. He can certainly help us. And he loves us so much. He's willing and able and eager to do that. He will not allow your foot to slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. He's not asleep on the job. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is the sh your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day or the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from this time forth 